I'm David Cook, coming to you live from the vault at the International Spy Museum. And this is the Internet's most asked OSINT questions. What is open source intelligence, or OSINT? Open source intelligence is a finished intelligence product. This is derived from publicly available information and commercially available information. These are very important to define before we get to open source intelligence. So publicly available information is anything that's available online, through public documents, anything heard, they could be events, newspapers, uh, and also gray literature or academic papers. CAI, or commercially available information, is anything that's bought from corporate entities, data brokers, it could be geospatial intelligence or imagery. This is raw data that is parsed and usually integrated into platforms or tools that are used to create open source intelligence. What's the history of open source intelligence? Well, in 1941, the coordinator of information was created by William Donovan, or Wild Bill Donovan. This was a memo sent to FDR to essentially coalesce all information into a central location. Uh, this is the predecessor of the Office of Strategic Services. The OSS has a research and analysis branch, and the best use cases that I've found from early open source intelligence, the RNA guys and gals within the OSS, would research foreign newspapers, pour through German obituaries, and they could estimate German casualties at an alarmingly accurate rate. What tools or skills are commonly used for OSINT research? There are myriad tools out there through link analysis or data aggregators. Uh, they're used to pull or collect publicly available information. And this can be from social media, it can be from forums, it could be from the dark web. The tools are just tools. The skills are way more important. And this happens with the analysts. This is critical thinking, asking yourself, how do I know I'm right instead of I'm right? never approaching a problem with a solution. The skills needed are honed over years through intelligence professionals, through training and understanding biases within psychology. How can OSINT be used in cybersecurity and threat intelligence? This is a very good question. Open source intelligence is an amalgamation of a lot of data. Now, cyber intelligence or cyber threat intelligence has to do with a lot of zeros and ones. Hackers, these are looking for vulnerabilities, open ports, looking to exploit vulnerabilities within the human chain. Criminals and adversarial networks also look to exploit what people post themselves. This could be an accidental credit card that you've posted in a picture, or a password in the background of a social media picture. Open source intelligence parses through either paste bins or dark web chats or anything on social media looking for compromised credentials to either log in or exploit to get into a system and extract sensitive or personal data. Is OSINT legal? Are there any ethical concerns? Short answer is yes, open source intelligence is legal or else we wouldn't be able to do it. Are there ethical concerns? Absolutely. In the United States, the Constitution outlines several civil liberties that we must abide by. For state and federal law enforcement, there are also state regulations that prohibit the collection of certain personal or sensitive data. Globally, for example, in Europe, there's GDPR, which restricts the collection of data, personal data, unless it is lawfully allowed. How would an intelligence agency use OSINT? <laughs> Great question. Open source intelligence is the int of first resort. It is usually faster and more cost effective than any of the exquisite collection platforms. This could be geospatial intelligence or signals intelligence and even human intelligence, which mitigates the risk for operations officers overseas. On the operational side, Open source intelligence can be used to build battle damage assessments, can be used for target audience analysis assessments and information operations, and even spin that information back to our adversaries in the information environment. Most recently, Ukraine and Israel have been masterful in the collection and repurposing of publicly available information to dominate the information environment. With more than 400 million terabytes of data being public every single day, 
Open source intelligence plays an increasingly larger role in the intelligence apparatus. More than 25% of the president's daily brief is made up of open source intelligence and actually only receives about 1.5% of the intelligence budget from Congress. Is internet stalking OSINT? When I think about internet stalking and open source intelligence, I think of a Saturday Night Live skit. There's a police department that is opening cold cases. They have two interns there. They're looking for people. As they go through the names, these interns are able to find people on Instagram and Facebook at alarming speed. Age demographics, what to look for, and a profile told these interns what social media platforms they were on. Now, it's Saturday Night Live, but this is real world nowadays. That is not real OSINT, but it is certainly elementary and the methodology is there. Finding a demographic, finding a target audience, and knowing where to look. What's next for OSINT? Big one. Technology will ultimately determine what the next wave of open source intelligence looks like. The Special Competitive Studies Project released an interim report in 2022 that stated, in an age where most data reside in the open world, the IC risks irrelevance if it does not maximize its use of open sources throughout the intelligence enterprise. The exponential growth in publicly and commercially available information has outpaced the IC's capability, or anyone's for that matter, to harness open source in support of U.S. decision-making and policy.